Good morning and welcome to worship. This is Sunday, July 12th, and it's the sixth Sunday of Pentecost. Today we're going to hear the story of the Ethiopian, Ethiopian eunuch and uh, from Acts chapter 8. Uh, a reminder that next week uh, we are planning to be together here at the church for one service at um, 9 a.m. So um, we will still be doing a recorded service online if you're not comfortable in, in coming back to church. And we ask that you all wear a mask um, when you come next week. So let us begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God and for the unity of all let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy, and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be fulfilled. To you, the one who answers prayer, to you all flesh shall come. Our sins are stronger than we are but you blot out our transgressions. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the oceans far away. You make firm the mountains by your power. You are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dusk to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. The second reading is from Romans. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel, the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, 
while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some feeds, seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky soil, but when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. That is what was sown on the path. And so for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sermon text for today is Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. So have you ever been on vacation somewhere far away from home? Well, most of us probably not this year. I mean, we take vacations to get away from everything, work, the family stress of busy schedules, and yes, people. Sometimes we just need that time away. I know I do. Well, I have been places where all of a sudden out of nowhere, someone starts yelling my name. No, it wasn't Paul either. And I'm startled because here I am in this place, hundreds of miles from home, and someone's yelling my name. I look around and lo and behold, it's someone from the area. How in the world did we end up in the same place at the same time. We look at each other astonished. Sometimes it's coincidence. Other times you feel like it was for a purpose. Like when the phone rings and it's someone who was on your heart that day. But what was that purpose, we wonder? It might not be in that moment it, that it comes to light, but it will. For me, these times come as I open the Bible or a devotion, and it is exactly what I needed that day and time. I always say that the Spirit is at work in those times. Now, this isn't exactly what is going on between Philip and the Enoch, but similar. So let's see what is happening in today's reading from Acts. The transcending power of the gospel continues in the episode for this Sunday's reading. Philip is instructed by an angel to go to the road that runs from Jerusalem to the southwest toward Gaza. Gaza is an important city along the Mediterranean coast. There he encounters an Ethiopian, Ethiopian eunuch who was returning to Ethiopia from Jerusalem, where he had been to worship presumably in the temple. Luke's readers, though, know, though, that the Ethiopian official would not have been permitted to worship in the temple. 
not because of his race, nationality, or status, but because of his sexual identity. A eunuch typically refers to a person who has been castrated often early enough in life to have significant hormonal impacts, though it may also refer to a man who is not castrated but is impotent, celibate, or otherwise unlikely to procreate. He held an office in Ethiopian court under Queen Candace. He was her first finance minister. It was virtually impossible that he would have been Jewish, and being a eunuch, he was an outsider to the Jewish community. He had just attended a Jewish festival, but he was still very interested in the Jewish ways. So he was reading the book of Isaiah, a passage associated with the suffering servant passage in Isaiah 53, and recognizes his need for help understanding this passage. While it is unlikely that the prophet who wrote those words was imagining a future messianic figure when Philip heard those words, his first thought must have been that that sounds a lot like Jesus. This gave Philip the opportunity to tell the Ethiopian about Jesus. The eunuch immediately recognizes the importance of what he has heard and expresses interest in becoming part of the Christ movement, something he could not have formally done within Judaism. Philip doesn't seem to hesitate. The race, nationality, or sexual identity of this person did not seem to matter to him. Here was a human being who heard the good news about Jesus, was compelled to be, become part of the group, and requested baptism. And who was Philip to stand in his way? In thinking about this in our gospel reading today, where was the seed sown for the eunuch? He was eagerly looking for understanding of the Isaiah passage. When he asked Philip, what's to stop you from baptizing me? There's some water over there. Let's go. And after he was baptized, he went away joyfully to share what had occurred. The seed had fallen onto fertile soil, even if the world didn't see the eunuch in that way. Philip was a deacon turned evangelist. And this narrative is the second encounter between the Hellenist evangelist Philip. The first was with Simon in Samaria. The conversation of Simon and others in Samaria required intervention from Peter and John from Jerusalem. In our story, the intervention is divine. Both the angel and the Lord and the Spirit speak to Philip, telling him to go and take the road down from Jerusalem to Gaza and then go join himself to the Ethiopian's chariot. In Acts, the angel of the Lord releases people from bondage. And the eunuch responds to this, as we know, by asking to be baptized. And if we can imagine, Philip must have looked surprised. The eunuch says, look, over there, there's some water. What's to stop you from, what's to stop me from being baptized? And they both went into the water, and when they came out, Philip was snatched up by the Spirit of the Lord. The eunuch didn't see him again, but went away rejoicing. We ourselves are not held in one place. The Spirit enters our lives when we least expect it. In our baptisms, we are called to be apostles, to share the good news of Christ Jesus in the world. Who are some of the people we are called to serve? besides the ones we already know. Who are, <clears throat> here is the eunuch wanting to know more about this man in the Old Testament. Philip and he are on the same road at the same time. Coincidence? No, I don't think so. Philip was placed elsewhere after the eunuch to continue the journey of sharing the faith. We have a story to tell on our faith journey. Your story may change someone's life. The Holy Spirit puts us in places we never thought we would be with people whose paths we didn't think we would ever cross. People like the Ethiopian eunuch. Jesus was the one spoken of in Isaiah, of in Isaiah that would come and change everything. The story was coming full circle and this man whose skin color was different who really didn't seem to fit the Jewish mold, had met Jesus in Philip. 
Now he had his story to tell. To fully preach the gospel, we need to sit with people who are different from us. We sit side by side or walk side by side in the same covered wagon as Ma and Pa Ingalls crisscross the prairie. We watch as our favorite television chef creates a gourmet meal with ingredients we have never heard of. We join in a class to enlighten our minds to change sitting next to someone who is different than we are. We sit by side by side as we reach the, read the scriptures and listen to each other's thoughts as told through the lens of our stories. Friends, this is why we venture down the wilderness road, unsure of either the destination or what it is we are looking for. New Testament scholar Mitzi Smith notes that in Acts, the angel of the Lord habitually releases people from bondage. The angel's prodding of Philip to sit and read with this stranger releases Philip from his parochial ideas of where God is at work. And then the spirit frees the Ethiopian eunuch of his literal reading of the text before him. So who will you run into on your next excursion? Whoever it is, let them see Christ in you. You never know whose life might change forever. Let the Holy Spirit be your guide on your journey of faith. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another in the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Gracious God, your word has been sown in many ways and places. We pray for missionaries and newly planted congregations around the world. Inspire us by their witness to the faith we share. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creating God, the mountains and the hills burst into song and the trees and fields clap their hands in praise. We pray for the birds and animals who make their home in the trees and for land stripped bare by deforestation. Empower us to sustainably use what you have given us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Reigning God, we pray for our nation's leaders. Increase their desire for justice and equality. We pray for our enemies. Bridge the chasms that divide us and guide authorities to a deep and lasting peace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Abiding God, care for all who are in need, especially those that we name in our hearts before you now. For those who are doubting, renew faith. For those who are worrying, provide release. For those who are struggling, ease burdens. For those in fear, give hope. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Renewing God, receive your church in this place. Nourish and nurture the seeds you have planted that we might grow as disciples. Replace what has been depleted, sustain our ministries, and deepen relationships with the wider community. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for all who died. Comfort us in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Oceans rise. 
stronger in the presence of my Savior. nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.